coming up on today's show. Lucid starts dropping some big hints at how it's going to get an EPA range of 400 miles, that's 643 kilometers per charge. Tesla rides the wave of a stock market high and announced as a $2 billion stock offering. And Rivian hints that there's a substantial price drop coming for the R1T electric pickup and R1S electric SUV. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transportation. We're back from Fully Charged Live in Texas and it was great to meet so many of you there. We'll be posting as many videos as we can in the coming weeks from that event, as well as coverage of my trip midweek to drive an electric big rig. That one was a lot of fun. Thanks to the Electric Auto Association for their sponsorship of today's show. Find out how you can accelerate the electrification of transportation today at electricauto.org. And stick around until the end of the show to find out how you can get 10% off some Transport Evolved merch. Later this spring, electric automaker Lucid will officially unveil the production version of its air electric sedan. And while we will have to wait until its official New York Auto Show reveal to find out exact specs, its CEO Peter Rawlinson has been talking to Green Car Reports about some of the things that set it apart from the competition. Rawlinson, who was chief engineer on the original Tesla Model S, says that Lucid has upped the car's operating voltage for lower currents and thus higher efficiencies at a given power level. Lucid has also worked hard to improve the aerodynamic performance of the air, as well as reduce losses in the drivetrain. Could this be the first true competitor to Tesla? Watch this space. At the end of January, Elon Musk stated in an earnings call that, quote, it doesn't make sense to raise money when quizzed about potential new stock offerings. But after an incredible couple of weeks on the stock market that has seen Tesla's shares hit a heady $962 per share, that's exactly what Tesla is doing. Announced Thursday, the company will issue 2.65 million shares in a public offering that could net it nearly 2 billion US dollars. Elon Musk is expected to buy about $10 million worth of those shares. Nikola Motor surprised everyone this week by announcing a brand new vehicle in the form of the Nikola Badger, a crew cab pickup with a plug-in battery electric range of 300 miles per charge and a fuel cell extender capable of adding an additional 300 miles of range, as well as some pretty crazy performance figures. While the looks are pretty decent, lots of people are questioning if the Badger will actually make it to market. But where Nikola may have the competitive edge over other fuel cell vehicles is the company's plan to build a nationwide network of fueling stations to support its Class 8 hydrogen fuel cell big rigs. Only time will tell, though, if that happens. Despite posting some pretty dismal financials that saw profits fall last year, Daimler has confirmed that it intends to bring its upcoming EQA electric crossover to market next year. The EQA, which we first saw as an electric hatchback, but which has morphed over time into an electric version of the GLA crossover, is expected to make its debut in Frankfurt toward the end of this year. But since Mercedes-Benz is constrained on its EQC production due to a lack of battery cells from its supplier LG Chem, it wouldn't be too forward to ask where cells for a second electric model will come from. And I don't have the answer. Talking of battery cell supply issues, Jaguar has temporarily halted production of the iPACE SUV after its Manga Stair factory in Graz, Austria, ran low on lithium ion cells. The supplier for these cells? LG Chem. The same company blamed for battery shell shortages at Mercedes Benz and Audi, as well as Hyundai. Last year, Jaguar made around 18,000 iPACE models, and while it's selling well in Europe, it's not doing very well across the pond in North America, where its high sticker price is putting buyers off. If you were at Fully Charged Live USA, you may have noticed the GM EV1 sitting front and centre in the main hall, and you also may have noticed the short live video I did post-show sitting inside the iconic car. The car itself belongs to Tulsa Tech in Oklahoma, and it's in fantastic condition. But in order to get it to the show, it was towed inside a car trailer 
pulled by an Audi e-tron. And with 4,000 pounds of stuff in tow, the Audi e-tron managed just 1.3 miles per kilowatt hour. That's less than half of its usual efficiency. Having towed with my own electric car, I can attest that range does plummet when you have something behind. But now we have figures to back that up. With investment from Ford and Amazon, it looks like the upcoming Rivian R1T pickup and R1S SUV are about to get a sizable price cut before they go on sale towards the end of this year. We're not sure how much that price drop will actually be, but I've heard figures banded around by many industry insiders that suggests the price cut could be as much as 20,000 US dollars, which would make the R1T nearer to 50,000 US dollars and the R1S nearer to 55,000 US dollars. When I have more concrete pricing info, I will, of course, share it with you. It's official. When the Ford Mustang Mark E goes on sale later this year, it will launch simultaneously in both the US and Europe. That's according to Ford executives on Thursday at the European Drive event for the electric crossover in London, stating that European drivers will get a version of the car that's designed for life on European roads. This means tweaking the suspension and steering as well as adjusted electronic stability control over the US model. While Europe will get a simu-launch with North America, though, it's not clear which countries will actually get it at the same time as North America. In a week which has seen Tesla restore autopilot functionality to a used Model S, it had deactivated autopilot on when the car traded hands, and then Tesla apologized to the owner, Tesla's ability to reach into customers' cars and tweak things has very much been in the spotlight. This week, Tesla reportedly issued a service memo to staff reiterating that all salvaged Teslas will have their supercharging as well as DC quick charging functionality at third party stations deactivated remotely, as well as announce a deadline to owners who have been refusing to update their car's onboard software. In both cases, Tesla is taking the security and safety route to justify its policies. And frankly, while it's great to see Tesla play safety so high, it also does raise questions over just who owns the car and who owns the software inside it. And now it's time for short shorts. Nissan's Q4 2019 financials just released show the company lost $237 million at the end of last year. With the company struggling to find its feet, it seems Nissan's once market-leading EV tech could ultimately suffer. Tesla has issued a voluntary recall for 15,000 Tesla Model X SUVs made before mid-October 2016. This is to address a potential issue with the car's power steering system. No injuries have been noted to date, but if the component fails, steering could be affected. Oil company BP says it will become net zero emission by 2050. While the company has invested heavily in electric vehicle charging infrastructure in recent years, it's also talking about, quote, reducing and neutralizing carbon in the extracted oil and gas it brings out of the ground. So the Los Angeles Fire Department has become the first North American fire department to place an order for an all electric fire truck. Having experienced the Rosenbauer CFT electric fire truck this week on tour, the agency is all in and says it will put the fire truck to use at one of its locations in Hollywood. Henrik Fisker accidentally posted a photo to Twitter this week of a pickup truck called the Alaska, a vehicle that's clearly based on the Fisker Ocean. While the photo was quickly deleted, most people are suggesting that this was a accident on purpose kind of thing. It's still winter in large parts of the world, and that usually means getting snow tires fitted to your car. But one Canadian Tesla Model 3 YouTuber has gone a little further, working to add rear wheel tracks to his Model 3 to get it up the mountain. Interesting. Hyundai has announced a new partnership with California electric vehicle startup Canoe to develop a new skateboard scalable platform for use in its future electric vehicles. The platform will be built to focus compact and subcompact electric car development. The latest budget proposal from President Donald Trump calls for an end to the US Advanced Technology Vehicle Manufacturing Loan Program that was used by Tesla and other automakers to fund the production of EVs, as well as an end to all EV tax credits and other green energy incentives.
but it's official. Electric vehicles are now more popular than stick shift transmissions, in the US at least. According to final figures from last year, US sales of electric vehicles accounted for 1.6% of all sales, whereas manual transmissions accounted for just 1.1%. Škoda has officially named its first all-electric SUV. Based on Volkswagen's MEB platform, that's the same platform underpinning the ID3, the new vehicle will be called the Škoda Enyaq, which is derived from the Irish name Enya, or the source of life. The US Justice Department has concluded its investigation into automakers who sided with California and against the Trump administration on rolling back fuel economy standards. And it says no illegal activity took place on the part of Ford, BMW, Honda or Volkswagen. Neuro, an autonomous vehicle delivery specialist, has been given driverless vehicle exemption by the federal government in the US, meaning that its little pod-like autonomous vehicles can now make deliveries of groceries in Houston, Texas. The future is here. The Union of Concerned Scientists has just published a report based on 2018 power plant emissions data in the United States. It shows that improvements in the US grid mean that electric cars really are far better to drive across the whole of the US than an internal combustion engine car. That's progress. Using data from Twitter, Motor One has produced a map of the most anticipated vehicles in the US this year. And in 12 states, electric vehicles win out, with the Porsche Taycan, Tesla Model Y, Rivian R1T and Ford Mustang Mark E all getting big hits. Electric cars are quiet and for the most part, pretty easy to get to sleep in. But Nissan has decided electric cars are too quiet for those looking to lull their children to sleep and has developed a zero emission lullaby for children in EVs, which includes sounds made by internal combustion engine noises. No, I don't get this one either. Tesla has confirmed that it's building a pilot battery cell manufacturing line in Fremont by advertising positions at the same. It's further evidence that Tesla is getting into the battery cell business and may not need Panasonic's help into the future. Something we've thought for a while, especially after that CES interview we had. Tesla's latest parts catalogue seems to suggest that Tesla is about to start making air suspension for Model 3. While Tesla, or rather Elon Musk, denies this fact, the parts catalogue does seem to include such a system and that contradicts that statement completely. The British government has pushed forward its plans for banning the sale of all new internal combustion engine vehicles. Previously, the ban had been set for 2040, but the new date pushes it forward to 2035. And those are your short shorts, and there will be more next week. The New Zealand government and WISC, the company behind the Cora Air Taxi, have reached a memorandum of understanding to establish passenger trials in Canterbury, New Zealand, using the VTOL craft. The all-electric Cora Air Taxi has been developed with backing from Boeing and Kitty Hawk, the Silicon Valley autonomous air taxi company backed by Google's Larry Page. Whisk has been working on readying the Cora for airworthiness since 2017, and the trial, if it takes place, will be the world's first VTOL passenger service. Well done, New Zealand! And finally, the Nissan Leaf was, for many years, the world's most popular electric car by sales volume. But for folks in the US Virgin Islands, it remained unobtainable, even as a new car, even though a local Nissan dealership became a trained service and sales place for Leafs, Nissan never actually had the allocation to sell them cars. So the dealer went the other way. They bought used Nissan Leafs and imported them from the mainland. But when a local Leaf owner needed a battery replacement, they were still at the mercy of Nissan, who quoted the dealership, wait for it, nearly $36,000 for a replacement battery pack. There will be more on this story, but come on, Nissan. That's really not the way to treat your dealers or your customers. And on that frustrating note, it is the end of today's show. But before I go, I do want to thank the Electric Auto Association for sponsoring our channel. They've been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967, and they firmly believe that our future depends on us all making the switch to clean, green electric cars today, which is what we believe. You can find out how to join, become a local EV educator for yourself, attend local monthly meetups, or talk to other EV owners about making the switch 
by going to electricauto.org. If you'd like to help us make more videos like this, please do like, comment and subscribe. You can send us a couple of dollars our way every month through Patreon. You can visit our swag store and if you fancy it, send us a coffee with Kofi. And if you're watching this before February 16th, head over to our swag store and enter this code in the discount window. You'll get 10% off your order. But bear in mind, it's only for February 15th and 16th. I'll be back soon with another show, but until then, thanks for joining me. And don't forget to be better, kinder and smarter with one another. As always, keep evolving.